Welcome to another video. Thanks for joining me. Now, in this one, I will be covering a subject that I believe that not a lot of people talk about. And I think if you're new in flight training, this is something that you should take seriously, especially if your goal is to do this professionally. I mean, work as a pilot. And uh, the reason why I'm sharing this is because I never really had the opportunity to be educated about this. And, you know, at the beginning, you, your goal is to um, get in industry, start learning to fly and just focus on flying and knowing what you're supposed to know so that you can get your ratings. However, the aspect of your logbook is never really discussed or really mentioned or the importance of keeping your logbook in pristine condition wasn't really emphasized. And uh, over the course of years, over the course of various interviews, going for different job opportunities, I've realized that it's actually very an important aspect of uh, record keeping and keeping your logbook in pristine conditions. If you're new on my channel, my name is Stephen Ojo, and on this channel I talk about aviation, specifically on how you can become a better, you know, candidate to live your life and achieve your dreams as a pilot. I never really had this opportunity, and that's why I'm actually sharing and trying to, you know, share as much information as I have it with people that are actually uh, out there looking for information like this. Uh, so if you're new, of course, you know, try to subscribe if you can, and also don't forget to drop a like on this uh, video. All right, so what I have here is a pile of logbooks, and this is the first one, this is the second one, and then third one, and then of course, I moved to uh, paper copies, and when I say paper copies, I'm talking about like paper copies of my digital logbook. And I've gone through the various types, you know, the electronic ones. And of course, I've gone through the paper one where you have to unwrite everything. So when I first started out my flight training, of course, I started with this type of logbook. You can see that tags in them. And um, it, it's still in pretty good condition, considering this is over 10 years now. It's in pretty good condition. I'm actually still impressed. And it's, you know, pretty neat. I mean, I can show you, although I have a terrible handwriting, but it's in pretty good condition overall. No stains and stuff like that. Common... Um, colors in terms of pen colors that I used and signatures where they should be, endorsements where they should be, stuff like that, you know. Now, I never really got any tutorial or any lessons on how to keep this in good condition. Of course, it's just my own habit of, you know, trying to just put it in good condition, keep it in good conditions because I know, or at least at the time I didn't know that, but I, I knew that it should have, there should be more emphasis on keeping this in good conditions and here's why. So when you go for interviews, the first thing that they will get from you are your logbooks. I mean, yes, I mean, you have more than one. Um, and the reason why they do that is because they want to verify your hours. They want to verify your endorsements. They want to see that you have the number of hours required to actually get the job. Now, of course, you would have filled out some of this information on the application, telling them your hours you have, your nights cross country, your solo times and things of that nature. But it is very important to them to make sure that these numbers are accurate and it's actually being endorsed properly by actual CFIs. Of course, in reality, this is one of the things that you also entrusted to report accurately. So that means you're not, you know, making up hours pretty much. So you have to record properly. Your cross country is actually a cross country, not just something that you made up. And that's a subject for a different day. But let's get back to the point. Now, when they get this logbook from you, they're looking at your hours ahead of you. They, now, the thing is, they haven't even seen you. They've only seen your application, your resume, and of course, the next thing they see on the day of the interview is your logbook before they even call you in to talk to you. So this logbook, in addition to your resume, are things that are speaking for you, talking on your behalf. And the condition of this logbook says a lot about you before you even show up. So which is why I believe um, it's very important. It's very important that you put this in, in conditions that will speak for you and say good things about you. So one of the things that you would have to do before you go for an interview, I mean, assuming that you've done the right preparations, is to make sure that your logbooks are tagged properly. Now, of course, this logbook had, how many hours did I have at the end of this logbook? Let me see real quick. I had about 800, about 830 hours by the time I exhausted this old logbook. And one of the things that they will look at is to make sure that, you know, like I mentioned, the, 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 the endorsements are in there, the hours are accurate. I mean, they won't go line by line, but they want to see like the progression, where you get your private, where you got your instrument rating, where you got your commercial, and then the check rides. And they, they look at those significant milestones along the way. 
And that is why you probably want to tag them along the way as well. So my recommendation for you is if you are new, the first thing is to make sure that, you know, you put your name, have your name on your logbook, have your address on your logbook, have your phone number on your logbook so that if it's missing, they can call you or someone can call you at least to report it and give it back to you because it's very important. The second thing that is also important is as you start to log your hours, log them in common colors. I mean, here I have a blue pen. My goal was to keep it black pen and you can see it's all black all through. So you have a specific pen with the same ink um, consistency so that your logbook looks neat. Now, the best thing which I'll, I'll move into in uh, down this video is electronic. But I'm going to talk about the importance of the paper one first. So the first thing is, like I said, make sure you write them neatly if you have a good handwriting. If you don't have a good handwriting, spend time writing it out so that it's neat at least, okay? And uh, make sure the accuracy is there so that you don't have any cancellations or scratches and things of that nature because that makes it look messy and makes your life even more difficult when it comes to calculating your hours as well. But then the other thing that you also want to make sure is the, 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 the signatures the, in the appropriate places. Now, moving on to your significant milestones, like your check rides, you want to make sure that those stand out. So for example, if I go to my check ride, which is where I got my first private pilot certificate, that's one I have tagged here. And I have the date marked on the tag. I have the I have an asterisk next to it to show that that was where I got that, uh, that was where I, when I achieved that milestone. The reason why you have want to have this there is because you want to make it easy for your interviewer to make sure that they can easily find these things. You don't want to make, give them a hard time. They have maybe thousands of applications that they go through every day, or maybe they have you know hundreds of people to interview that day. You don't want to make them kind of start to hate you already because you're making their life so difficult, or your calculations are wrong, or you you have so many scratches, and you they're already disinterested in you. You don't want that. So. That is why you want this information to be easily found. So that's what I did there for my private, and I did it for instrument, and I did it for commercial, and my added ratings and things of that nature. And you can see along the way, you can see that I still have the consistency. I have a blue pen here because this was an examiner that used a blue pen that wrote in, you know, my my um, the, the, the check right information and all that stuff. So and I continued that even in this logbook as well. And eventually. You know, I moved on to this logbook and see there's one tag in this one because by the time I got here, I was already instructing. And I think the only thing that is added to in this one that is tagged was my, maybe when I moved to the airlines, actually. Uh, let me look at it real quick. Actually, that was my uh, multi-engine um, instructor rating, okay? So that's how I kind of tag this. So common colors, um, redate, tag the, tag the point in which you achieved your significant milestones and uh, keep them in good condition, of course. Now, once I moved to the airlines, I started, I moved to electronic logbook. So let's talk about the importance of this one. The reason why this is important, the paper is because, first of all, you can easily add your endorsements, okay? Those are the endorsements at the back, and you can see those are there to keep a good record of, okay? That's very important. Now, of course, the electronic ones, you can do the same thing, but the problem with those is sometimes you might have examiners that are uh, maybe pretty old school, maybe they don't have an electronic version on he, in which they can, you can send them a request to sign your electronic um, record. And that can be a bit of a challenge if you go strictly record. So my recommendation would be if you can, of course, start with a paper logbook, keep a duplicate record of that information on an electronic version. So that way you can pretty much, you won't have to uh, sit down and for hours updating your logbook and an electronic version because that was what I had to do down the line. I had to do that. But in order to save you the stress, keep a paper logbook and also keep an elect electronic version. Any electronic version would work. It doesn't matter. As long as you can print out some of the, uh, of, 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 of the information, that's all you need. And of course, keep the endorsements in the paper version. So once you then move into the, like for example, when you start instructing where you're piling it all these hours, then at that point, you don't really need endorsements anymore. You can then strictly go electronic. You don't need uh, the, um, what do you call it? The endorsements. Yeah, you don't need endorsements anymore at that point for most part, unless you're getting new returns. But the importance of that is you can strictly then transition to an electronic version and all your hours from your paper already in your electronic version and also all your, um, uh, the current hours you're getting are also being transitioned, are also being recorded on your, um, 
electronic version. Now, some people still choose to keep a paper logbook, which there's no harm in that. Just like I still do, of course, I print them I print them out. The reason why I chose to do that is because by the time you do five legs, especially the regional, that's a lot of time to start trying to log electro, uh, uh, log by handwriting it. You know, some people do it. Some people do it just for the fun of it. Some people do it just because they just want to handwrite the hours in. And that's cool. If you are the type of person that has the patience to do that, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but the point of this is by the time you're going for your interview, you want to make sure that your, electro, your logbooks are in good condition, are well kept, the record can easily be understood. And even on the electronic version, I still have tags in them. I have like labels along the way. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that. Let me go back here. So you can see I have like a table of content that shows my the date of my certificates. It shows the dates in which I, you know, I got a rating and things of that nature. That is all to make it easy for people that are probably interviewing me to make sure that, okay, I have the ratings and also they can see the dates and they can go to the either paper logbook or the electronic logbook to verify this information. That would make your life a lot easier. The worst thing you want to do is to walk into an interview and the questions, the first question they ask you is, wait, where are your hours? Where are your ratings? Hey, how come you, know, you do not have the hours logged or your hours are not accurate? Things of that nature. Then it sets a bad tone for you and that means your interview is probably not going to go well and you don't want that because that will set you off and uh, now you are blabbering and you are saying things that doesn't make sense and you know your confidence is shattered you don't want that to happen so i hope that this video will help you and i hope that you will take the full advantage of the information i've just shared and uh, make your own life a lot easier and like I said, you know, keep paper versions. If you can keep up with it, keep some of the keep the paper version especially for your training records and all that. And eventually, you can present your electronic version, and that will make it a lot easier to you know uh, to update. And of course, keep backups. Okay, even on electronic version, keep backups of the files on a cloud so that in case your computer system goes down and uh, you don't have an access to it, it to the computer itself, at least you have an electronic version somewhere that you can download and. Uh, restore your information. The other thing is, of course, keep a paper version of the electronic version. That means print the version out. Like, for example, when I when I finish a, a, a particular number of pages, I end up printing them out and I add them to the paper logbook because that's a physical hard copy backup, you know, of, of the information as well. That's all I wanted to share with you. I didn't mean for this video to be too long, but it's something that I feel like is very important for someone out there. And I hope that you found value in this video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.